I hope you're all sitting comfortably because today's video is going to be a long one. So I mentioned a few weeks ago that I'd be doing a mid-year beauty roundup of all my favourite products from the last six months and I've sat down, I've watched my last six or seven monthly beauty favourites videos and I've compiled a list of all my favourite things from this year. This isn't going to be quite as comprehensive in terms of categories as my end of year roundup, that is the really, really big one, but I've kind of narrowed it down to the main things, the most important bits and I've stuck to makeup and skincare for this. So let's get started. Some of these are probably going to be the same as the end of year favourites videos, but I have a lot of new favourites, a lot of new products that I've discovered this year. I'm going to begin with makeup and the first category is best primer and this I remember is definitely the same as my end of year favourites. This is the Max Factor Facefinity All Day Primer. I love this, I think it's such a great budget option, it really does help my makeup last, smooths out all my pores and just gives my skin a nicer, smoother texture. I tend to like primers that are not completely mattifying and very silicone-y feeling, just ones that help my makeup stay oil free and just fresher for longer and this is definitely one of those. It has a really nice texture, it's a little bit hydrating so it keeps any dry patches at bay and I also sometimes like to mix this in with a base product so I'll put a pump of this into my foundation and mix them together before I apply it on my skin and I find it not only helps sheer the product out if it's quite a full coverage foundation but it also helps it last a lot longer too so that's another way that I like to use primers as well. I've just stuck to one base favourite so I haven't picked between full coverage and lighter coverage because actually my overall favourite base for the last six months has been the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue which is just a tinted moisturiser. The older I've gotten it seems the more into tinted moisturisers I am and just very light hydrating products and this one is quite different because it's a gel cream. It feels very gel like and very light and soothing when you put it on your skin so it doesn't weigh anything down and it's not as sticky and as tacky as some tinted moisturisers can be which I think is really great because it doesn't make my skin oily, it doesn't make all the products sort of slide off once I've put them on top of it and I just love the coverage, it's not a full coverage at all, it's sort of light to medium but it just gives my skin this lovely soft focus look, it does get rid of any uneven skin tone, any redness and it just balances everything out nicely but gives it this really lovely inner glow which I really like. So this has definitely been my favourite and I think I'm nearly out of it actually, I've used it so much that there's not a lot left in this tube. When it comes to picking a favourite concealer it's a bit of a tricky one because I do tend to sort of flick between different concealers, I usually use about three different ones on my face a day but the one I think I've had the most use out of and the one I actually like wearing on its own the most is the Makeup Forever full cover concealer. The thing I like about this most is that it lasts for so long, it really is a long lasting one and because it's waterproof too it's great for the summer because it's sort of sweat proof as well. It is a very good coverage and it just sort of blends into the skin really seamlessly so this one I like to use just on bare skin instead of foundation sometimes so if I'm just having a very natural makeup day I will literally just wear this and some blusher and that's it for my base but it's also really good on top of foundation it just seems to sort of blend in and work really nicely with any product you put it on top of and covers really really well, covers my dark circles, covers up any spots and blemishes, it's just a great all-rounder. I've gone for a bit of a wild card for favourite powder because this is probably not what you're expecting me to talk about, but my favourite powder has actually been the NYX HD Studio Photogenic Finishing Powder, that's got a long name. This is just a completely translucent powder, it's pretty much just white and it doesn't have any colour but it really smooths out my skin and I've only been using this for the last month or so but I think it's blown all the other powders that I've used in the past out of the water. Now of course I do I do still love my ambient lighting powder from Hourglass, that will probably be always my number one favourite but I've been using this a lot more to kind of set down my concealer under my eyes and also just to give a nice smooth base for any powder products to go on top of. I've tried quite a few of these powders in the past before, these sort of very thin translucent ones and a lot of them do make my skin look incredibly cakey and they just don't sit right and they don't even look right. But this one is very different to those, it just looks like your skin, slightly more matte but still quite glowy as well, I don't find that this makes my skin completely shine free and really flat looking which is the way I like my powders to work so this has been a real favourite of mine recently. Okay favourite bronzer has to be one from the drugstore I love this product it's the Safe Glory Solar Powder Bronzer please excuse my disgusting dirty packaging I am so excited to get the new packaging they've put it into one of their plastic cases which is just going to be so much better. I kind of bought this on a whim and I wasn't expecting to like it that much because I have my kind of tried and true favourite bronzers like the Benefit Hula Bronzer, NARS Laguna but this I have found I've used more than any of 
of those. It's a combination of two, so you get the lighter side and the darker, but I just swirl my brush in between both of them. And it's just such a nice, warm, glowy colour. I think it's always the colour of bronzer that makes the difference. Soap and Glory are probably one of my favourite drugs for brands. They really do some amazing powder products especially, and the eyebrow products, which I will be talking about in a second too, I love. Favourite blusher is of course going to have to be one from Hourglass. These are the ambient lighting blushes. The excitement I felt when I found these were coming out, I went and bought two. I just love them. I think they are so beautiful. They're this kind of striped, marbled effect blush, and even looking at that you wouldn't think it would come out particularly dark or particularly pigmented, but you would be so wrong because they are so strong and so dark and they really, you don't need to put your brush in there at all, they just have so much pigment to them. This is the shade Diffused Heat and it really has become my favourite everyday go-to blush. I used to really love the Balm Frat Boy blush, which is still one of my favourites, but that was my everyday blush. I'd pick that up without even thinking about it and just know it would look good, but this has definitely replaced that. It's just a really lovely warm tone corally pink and those are the shades that I really love to wear. So this has become a fun favourite and it's also a really great at staying put on your skin. A lot of blushes seem to be just sucked in and absorbed by my cheeks after a few hours, but this one really stays quite true to colour and quite strong for the whole day, so I can't rave about these enough. I also have one in the shade Dim Infusion, which is more of a peachy tone, which I love as well, but I think this one will always be my favourite. Best highlighter, let's not even spend too long talking about this because I have probably featured this in more videos than any other product, and it's the Balm's Mary Lou Manizer. Mary Luminizer or Mary Lou Manizer, I don't even care. I just love it so much. I'm sure I've had this now for way too long to be hygienic, but I do spray it with some disinfectant every so often. But there is just no dent in it whatsoever. You need the smallest amount, and it's the closest highlighting product I've ever found to give that just sort of wet look on the skin, that really lovely, glowy, fresh highlight on your cheekbone without looking shimmery. There's no sparkle, there's no glitter in this. I just think it's the ultimate highlighting product. Brows, let's talk about brows. Now, I could not pick one favourite brow product because there are a duo of two things that I use on a daily basis and I really couldn't be without one or the other. They work so perfectly together and they are the Bobbi Brown Brow Kit and the Soap and Glory Archery Pencil. So the brow kit comes first, I use the lighter one to fill in the front part of my brows and then the darker one for the arch and the tail and I don't really try to extend it or make too much of a shape, I just use this to really fill in any gaps and any sparse patches. And then I go on to the Archery Pencil. This is so great because it has a little spoolie on the end. I think all brow products should be made to come with these because they are so handy and convenient. And then the pencil is a really nice, very, very skinny one and I find this is perfect for just adding that little bit of extra definition into your brows. So I use this to kind of extend my arch, make the tail a bit longer and just generally fill in any really, really sparse patches. And I think these two together just make such a natural brow combination so I really, I really couldn't be without them. And I really haven't used any other brow products apart from these two for the last six or seven months. They're the only things that I reach for in the morning. So those have to be, both of them, my best eyebrow products. In the category of best, eyeshadow comes the Bioterry Ombre Black Stars. I'm sure you're expecting these to be popping up in this video. I really don't have enough of these in my collection. I have just these two shades, but I get so much use out of both of them. I have the colour Misty Rock, which is a really lovely taupey, purpley, kind of silver colour. It's a really different one, not something that I've seen before. And then Blonde Opal, which is a lovely gold. I always use this for the tear duct to highlight in there, and also just for a nice base for eyeshadows as well. There are so many different dupes for these on the high street. There are so many brands that have these kind of eye crayons, but the thing I love most about these, except the packaging, which is just absolutely gorgeous, is definitely the longevity and the colour. These are not coming off. Once you put them on, they are sucked to your eyelids until you decide to remove them. And the shades that by Terry do are really different from anything that I've seen before, so I really can't rave about these enough. Best eyeliner is one that I discovered this year, and I really haven't looked back since finding it. This is the Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. Now there are so many of these felt tip liquid liners on the market. This one I love especially though because it has a very thin and very pointy nib so you can get a really lovely precise line. You can go for a thinner line, a long wing or something quite small and short but the formula of this is probably the best thing about it. It just lasts forever. I put this on and then I think I was wearing it for something like 24 hours one day. I didn't take my makeup off. I woke up and this was just exactly the same as when I'd applied it. So I think that is the true test of how good a product is. It just lasts for ages and the colour is a really nice deep black. I find with some liquid liners they can look a bit grey and ashy after 
after a few hours, but this stays really true to colour and really nice and dark. So this has been my favourite liner and I will continue to keep buying this. I think I'm going to stop my search now because this is the best one I think I'm ever going to find. Okay, let's talk about mascara. I have two here because I just can't decide between them. These have both come into my life this year and I think they are both amazing, amazing products. So the first one is Benefits Roller Lash. I have given this one its fair share of rave reviews. I think it's a really nice formula and it has a really great wand as well. It's quite a skinny one, not something I would expect to really like because I tend to go for thicker ones. And it's also curved, so I think that is really the key to it. It gets right into the roots of your lashes. It sort of fits to the shape of your eye. So it just really combs them out, gives a lot of definition, a lot of separation, and a lot of volume as well. I know a lot of people have complained about this one saying it's not volumizing at all, but for me, with a couple of coats on, I find it is really, really thickening. This is the only thing that I've been using recently and I really, really like it. It's the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. I absolutely hate the name of this mascara. I don't know why they called it that, but it is a really good product. I love the packaging though. It's a really nice sort of weighty feeling mascara and I like it when products are kind of heavy. I think it makes them feel a bit more luxurious and a little bit more worth the money. But this one is quite opposite to the Benefit Mascara in that it has a very, very thick, very spiky, very product laden wand. You do need to have quite a light hand with this one because it does have so much product on it so just one coat is pretty much enough to give really really thick very fluttery full lashes but I like to go on with a good few couple of coats and it gives such a nice look to my lashes so this has been my favourite of the moment but I definitely was loving Roller Lash for the last couple of months as well. Last category for makeup is the category of best lip products and I couldn't just pick one this is me we're talking about so I had to go for favourite bold and favourite nude colour. So favourite bold has to be the Sephora Cream Lip Stain in Always Red. I picked this up while I was in Paris a few months ago and it's just become one of my absolute favourite red lip products. It has a really great formula, it's one of those sort of liquid lipsticks with a little sofa applicator and I find of all of them this is the nicest to apply. Some liquid lipsticks can kind of drag a little bit and once you put one layer on you can't put another on because it gets a bit sticky and a bit cloggy but this is just a really lovely smooth formula, it glides on really easily and the colour of this, oh my gosh, the colour of this is just one of the best reds I've ever found. It's such a nice rich really deep tone red. It's not particularly orangey, it's more on the kind of cool tone blue side which isn't something I usually go for but this one I do really love. I think it's just the combination of the formula and the colour all together just makes it my favourite red lip product. And my favourite nude option is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is one of her matte revolution lipsticks. I love the packaging of this, I think it's so gorgeous. I think when it comes to nude lipsticks I tend to go for something a bit more shiny and glossy and a bit more natural but this I really like and I think it's very similar to the actual colour of my lips so it kind of just makes them look a bit even, a little bit better. It's kind of a your lips but better colour. It's also probably one of the most moisturising matte lipsticks I've ever come across. It definitely looks very nice and matte and shine free when it's on but it kind of gives your lips a lot of hydration as well which is a very strange combination of formulas but I think it's great. It's a great colour, great formula so this has been one that I like to keep in my bag and just pull out whenever I want to put some lipstick on. Okay I hope you're all still with me. That was makeup done and now we're going to talk about skincare. Go get a cup of tea, pause this video right now if you fancy. So first category is best for makeup remover and this one has to go to the Nivea Sensitive 3-in-1 Micellar Cleansing Water. As far as cleansing waters go and micellar products, this has become one of my favourites. I'm a big fan of Bioderma and I always did used to use Bioderma, but then micellar waters kind of had a moment on the high street and everybody was bringing one out, so I tested out quite a few and I have to say this is not only my favourite from the high street, but I think it's also better than Bioderma and I know that because I actually stopped using this, started using Bioderma again because I had a fresh new bottle and I noticed it just really dried out my skin it felt a lot tighter and a lot less comfortable when I use that whereas this kind of has a bit of moisture in it too so it takes off makeup really really well again just slightly better than Bioderma in my opinion but it also feels really comfortable on the skin it's hydrating and it stops that horrible tight feeling that you get when you do take your makeup off so this one is definitely my favourite and it's about two pounds which is definitely a lot kinder to my bank balance because I go through this stuff so much I think I have a bottle on my desk a bottle in my bedroom a bottle in the bathroom I just like to keep makeup remover around at all times because I do enjoy taking my makeup off. So best cleanser has not changed from last year, it's the Oscar Renaissance Cleansing Gel. This I think is it, this is the cleanser for me, I found it, I'm not going to be trying out anything else. The word gel is definitely misleading because this isn't really a gel at all, it's a balm cleanser but a balm cleanser in a pump bottle which I think is genius and I do love balm cleansers, they're definitely my favourite to use because they just melt away makeup, they leave your skin feeling very soft and very 
very hydrated but they do cleanse really well and this one I think is my favourite of all of them because it's not quite as heavy, not quite as thick as the ones you tend to get in a pot and then you have to scoop them out. And it definitely does make my skin a lot smoother whenever I use it. It actually has pumpkin enzymes in it which kind of help to exfoliate at the same time as we're cleansing so it's kind of a bit of a two-in-one. I just love this, can't rave about it enough, definitely my favourite cleanser. So the best toner category goes to one that I use when I feel like I need it, so specifically when my skin is very dehydrated and feels very dry. And I always reach for the Neils Yard Rehydrating Rose Toner when it feels like that. I've almost been using this as more of an extra treatment step rather than just an everyday toner because it is very hydrating. It's not quite as thick and lotion-like as something like the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Toner, which I do really like as well, but it just really soothes my skin, it cools it down, and it just leaves this sort of layer of moisture across it, which I really like. It's a great first step before going on to serums and moisturizers. And it smells like roses, which is just really lovely really refreshing so when I do use a toner on the odd occasion I always reach for this one. So the best exfoliator and best mask kind of fall into the same category so I'm going to talk about both of them because my favourite exfoliator is actually a mask. This is the Ren Glycolactic Radiance Renewal Mask which has always been a firm favourite of mine. So it's a glycolactic mask, it has glycolic in it and it really does exfoliate my skin brilliantly. I'm not really a fan of scrubs and anything with harsh sort of abrasive beads in it and I actually find this works a lot better than those. So I just try to use this whenever my skin feels like it needs that bit of exfoliation whether that's every other day or maybe even just once a week or once every two weeks. I put a really really thin layer of this on and leave it on for about 10 or 15 minutes and as soon as you take it off your skin just feels so much smoother, all those dry sort of patches of dead skin are gone and it just feels really refreshed and it's kind of a little bit more glowy than usual. Best serum, I think this is the same as my last video, this is the Sarah Chapman Skin Assist Intense Hydrating Booster. Still love Sarah Chapman skincare products, I think they're all beautiful but this one in particular I think is my favourite. It's a hyaluronic acid serum, so it just promotes so much moisture and hydration and plumped lovely feeling glowy skin. I think this bottle is on its last legs because I really do use this every single day without even thinking about it. If I don't use this before my moisturiser I notice that it doesn't sink in quite as well, it doesn't leave my skin feeling as hydrated for as long as I use this so I think it's just an absolute hero product in my skincare routine. Best eye cream without a doubt goes to the Kiehl's Clady Corrective Dark Circle Perfector. Not only is this SPF 30 which I think is an amazing thing to have in an eye cream because it's really rare to find any with SPF in, let alone SPF 30. It also has an instant correcting pigment to it, so this basically works kind of as a hybrid between skincare and makeup. It gets rid of my dark circles completely, it's the perfect thing to use before concealer. Unfortunately it does wash off because it is just a sort of temporary makeup product, but I think this is probably the best thing I've found just to get rid of that purpley, bluey undertone that my eyes do get unfortunately being a member of the dark circle club. It's also really hydrating so it does the job of your eye cream and your corrector all in one so it's really the only eye product that I need. Best moisturiser is also one from Kiehl's. I love Kiehl's moisturisers, I think they just suit my skin really well. And this is a skin rescuer, this is my kind of summer moisturiser. This is a stress minimising daily hydrator and it's definitely a lot lighter than something like the ultra facial cream which I also really like from Kiehl's. It just keeps my skin hydrated for as long as I need it to, it doesn't interfere with any makeup that I put on top of it. It doesn't go particularly greasy but it still feels like it's quite plumped and moisturised throughout the day. And then in the category of best SPF, my favourite goes to the Radical Skincare SPF. More than anything just because it's the one I've been using for the last four or five months. But it's really great, it's quite lightweight and thin so you really can use as much as you need. But I haven't burnt at all, I haven't really had any extra freckles or any sun damage on my skin so it definitely does the job of protecting my skin. It just suits me really well. I think I may have to upgrade to an SPF 50 now that we're properly in summer and I'm also going to LA next week so I'm definitely going to be cracking out the heavy duty SPS for that but so far this year this has been my favourite. So we're on to the final category of this video that really did fly by quite quickly but this is the category of best lip balm. There's going to be no surprises here, it's the NYX Rev de Mille lip balm. This will always be my favourite, it's changed the way my lips feel. I used to have very very dry lips, they used to get chapped all the time and they never really sat particularly well with lipstick which was annoying because lipstick is my favourite thing to wear but this just changed them completely, they're smooth, they don't get chapped pretty much ever as long as I'm using this on a daily basis and it also works nicely underneath lipsticks it helps them last a lot longer and stay nice and hydrating so this will be probably always one of my favourite ever skincare products I'm so glad that I came across it. This is now my fourth tub I think I go through this stuff so quickly I think I use up one every four or five months so 
fourth one now still love it as much as ever so that is my mid-year beauty roundup i hope you enjoyed that and it wasn't too long i'm guessing this video is probably about 15 minutes long by now but thank you all so much for sticking around if you did and if you did like this video give it a like and subscribe if you're new and i will see you all soon bye Thank you.